Hi everyone, Mike here from Watch It Paint It, and in this video I'm going to show you a method I've been using lately for getting what I think is a pretty fantastic metallic gold color. To demonstrate this technique, I'll be using some Battle Sister Paragon War Suits, and I'll be starting off with three colors, a black primer, and then a dark silver undercoat, and then finally a bright silver from above. Now, if you don't have an airbrush, you can skip the first few steps and just start off with a bright silver primer, or you can prime the miniature in black and then dry brush on a bright silver over all the areas that you want to become gold. I used the same sort of technique with Necrons in a previous video, and this part is something I stole from Vince Venturella. It's basically a metallic xenothal. You can see I'm covering the model with a dark silver. This one is called Steel Model Color from Vallejo. Unlike with my Necrons though, I'm not leaving any black behind. I want full coverage with the silver colors. Once the steel color has time to dry, I'm then spraying the models from above at a 45 degree angle with the bright silver, leaving that darker silver color to cover the underside of the models. But all of the upturned armor plates should be covered in the bright silver. So as you can see, there's a little bit of contrast in the shadows with that darker metallic. The next step is to tint the silver with a gold wash, or in this case, a mix of speed paints. It took me a few attempts to get a good mix, but thanks to some tips from some of the people in my Warhammer group, I think I got a color that looks pretty good. It's nice when people will tell you when they don't like your paint scheme. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Cody. But seriously, it is a big help to have honest criticism. The mix I finally settled on was a 3-2 mix of Sand Golem and Zealot Yellow. To make enough paint for one of these models, I mixed 12 drops of the Sand Golem with 8 drops of the Zealot Yellow. Now this is the fun and easy part. Just put a thick layer of this over the silver and don't let it pool too much. This is going to tint the silver a deep yellow color. It's not going to be a super convincing gold color yet though, that'll come with the next step. Often what happens when you're painting ornate Warhammer armor is you'll paint the armor plates and then meticulously paint the insane amount of trim. I'm avoiding that last step by just leaving the trim silver. So really all I have to do is paint inside the lines with one thick coat. Alright, I've got my armor panels all tinted with yellow speed paint and now to add the shading. I'm first going to cover the models with a gloss varnish. You don't need an airbrush for this, a rattle can gloss varnish is fine. I'll be using mecha varnish through my airbrush. Uh, and then I'm going to give that gloss a few hours or even overnight to settle in. The next step is to mix up some snakebite leather contrast paint with an equal amount of medium. Snakebite leather is a reddish brown color so that should deepen this yellow to a warm gold and add some shadow around the edges of the trim. The gloss varnish is going to make it so this contrast paint doesn't stain the yellow too much. The color should shift a bit, a little bit towards orange, but most of the paint is going to run off to the edges. Now the contrast paint is going to want to get gummy on you and start leaving tide marks if you let it, so you'll want to do one body part at a time. You'll also want to have four or five drops of pure contrast medium in a cup or a dry palette and use that to wipe away excess contrast paint. This will also keep the contrast paint activated and give you more time to move it around. I wouldn't use water to do that because I think it'll thin the paint and make it too runny. Once every part of the gold armor is coated, set that aside to dry completely. I went ahead and painted the rest of the model and then I went and painted a bunch more models using the same method. I'll let you decide if it's a gold color that you would want to use. Now there are quite a few steps involved with this method, but each one is pretty easy to do and this method doesn't require any layering or highlights or extreme precision. You're often just slopping the colors on and letting them do their thing. So thank you to all of our patrons for your continued support. Let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for watching.